Welcome to the course on green technologies for African micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. Today, we will cover the fifth of the six modules of this course. In this lecture, we will discuss the concept of design thinking and learn to apply specific tools and techniques that are relevant for designing green and impactful innovations. At the end of this module, you will be able to Describe the vital attributes of design thinking, such as collaboration, human-centeredness, experimentalism, and visualization. Understand the five stages of the design process, namely empathizing, defining, ideating, prototyping, and testing. Be familiar with frameworks and tools for executing the five stages of the design process and apply them to a real world cases. Design thinking has been defined as a human-centered approach to innovation that draws from the designer's toolkit to integrate the needs of people, the possibilities of technology, and the requirements for business success. Many small and large companies use design thinking to improve their innovation process. You can use a QR code provided to the bottom right side of the screen to find out how these companies use design thinking. Design thinking is a way of thinking and working through which innovators see the world to find possible solutions for complex design challenges. Some of the attributes of design thinking are the following. Human-centeredness, seeking to understand and resolve the problems that humans face. Collaborative teamwork, working with interdisciplinary teams. Learning by doing, Rapidly moving to action with the goal of learning from the experience. Embrace experimentation. Searching solutions by trying out different approaches. Understand patterns, relationships, and systems in order to find the most effective solution. Use visualization to facilitate information processing. This can be done using drawings, physical models, maps, blueprints, shapes, colors, symbols, pictures, photos, objects, etc. Design thinking involves an iterative process through which you achieve critical milestones that will eventually lead a functioning solution. It is a non-linear process that involves moving back and forth in simple cycles. The process of design thinking includes a double diamond. Each part of the double diamond is characterized by divergence of ideas followed by their convergence. 
the first diamond includes discovering and defining. It is all about discovering and defining the problem. The second diamond is about developing and delivering a solution to the design challenge. Each diamond stage in design thinking has three phases, diverging, reverging, and converging. Diverging means collecting diverse ideas that might help to solve the problem. Reverging means rearranging the ideas and elaborating the most promising ones. Converging means choosing your most promising ideas. Please use the QR code at the end of this website link. Please use the QR code or website link at the bottom right of the screen to watch a short YouTube video that introduces the concept of design thinking. Design thinking is implemented through the following five stages. One, empathy. Two, define. Three, ideate. Four, prototype. Five, test. In the rest of the lecture, we will go through these five stages one by one. The first two stages of design thinking are empathy and define. These two represent the first diamond in design thinking process. The diamond represents the divergence of ideas to discover a problem followed by a convergence of ideas on its definition. The last three stages of design thinking are ideate, prototype, and test. They represent the second diamond in design thinking process. The diamond includes a divergence of ideas for developing a solution followed by a convergence of ideas for delivering it. The first stage in design thinking is empathy. The goal of design thinking is to solve the pressing needs of the end user, to meet the wishes and needs of the end user as closely as possible. Design thinkers need to look at the problem through their eyes. Empathy allows designers to keep into the shoes. Empathy allows the designers to step into the shoes of the end user to understand her life, needs aspirations, and challenges. This allows them to build emotional connection to better understand her feelings. Sympathy gives us fresh insights and inspires us to find new solutions. Designers should ask questions about the needs, interests, and perspectives of the user they should be non-judgmental, open, curious, and try to find new patterns from the interview. 
building empathy requires going through four stages. In the first stage, we discover about the experiences of the end user through an in-depth interaction. In the second stage, we immerse ourselves in the full experience of the end user. In the third stage, we build an emotional connection with the end user by creating association between our own memories and experiences and hers. In the last stage, the end user disengages from the emotional attachment with the aim of finding a solution to the challenges the end user is facing. There are a variety of tools and frameworks that design think thinkers can use to build empathic connections with end users. These include empathy maps, in-depth interviews, observations, flip charts, questionnaires, exam, etc. Empathy map is one of the vital tools for empathizing with the end user. An empathy map provides a systematic approach for cataloging with the user. An empathy map provides a systematic approach for cataloging what the user thinks, does, and feels. The designer asks the questions shown on the framework to better understand the end user. The responses are filled into the framework to visually organize the thoughts, feelings, hearings, sights, speeches, actions, problems, and desires of the end user. If the innovation you are designing targets a diverse group of end users, it makes sense to classify them into different customer segments. Empathy map can then be applied to each customer segment separately. After collecting enough ideas using the empathy map, the next step is sorting them into themes. The goal is to find patterns and insights into the needs, desires, and problems of the end user. Please use the QR code or website link at the bottom right of the screen to watch a short YouTube video on how to apply the Empathy Map Framework. Let's take a few moments to reflect on the following questions. Choose one person you can serve with your skills. She could be your student, your customer, your neighbor, or family member. Use the empathy map to reflect how you can serve her better. What does she think, think and feel, hear and see? What are her fears, needs, and problems? Find one thing you should start to do and another thing you should stop doing to make her life better. The next stage in the design thinking process is defining the problem. 
The purpose of this stage is to synthesize the information gathered during the empathy phase and determine what specific problem your innovations should solve. This is a key stage because it affects the entire direction of future work. The effect of this stage is to formulate a specific question. What is the problem to be solved? A number of tools can be used to visually document the information in accessible manners. Relevant tools include whiteboards, flip charts, and sticky notes. Methods of analysis for organizing information include brainstorming, the five whys method, and fishbone diagram. The five whys method was popularized by Sakishi Toyota the founder of Toyota, as an element of the Kaizen methodology. The Five Whys method helps to identify the root cause of the problem by iteratively asking the question, why? The method seeks to answer why the problem arose and why it was not noticed. For example, the problem could be that you ran through a red traffic light. By asking the question why repeatedly, you could get to the root cause that led to this outcome. The results of the five whys analysis can be depicted using the fishbone diagram. Such a diagram shows how a series of causes led to a major outcome. The third stage of design thinking is ideation. The goal of the ideation process is generating ideas that can solve the identified problem. At this stage, brainstorming is carried out for each problem defined. After the ideas are formed, their reality should be evaluated. Limitations, technical, economic, legal, should be specified. Modify ideas so that they correspond to real and real possibilities. A wide variety of tools are available to aid in the process of ideation. These include different types of brainstorming, mind mapping, flip charts, thinking hats, and others. Some of the best practices of the ideation process are the following. Set a time limit. Stay on topic. Defer judgment or criticism. Encourage wild, wacky, and weird ideas. Include outsiders. Build on each other's ideas. Be visual. Create constraints. Mind mapping is one of the vital tools that can aid in ideation. Mind mapping is a process of visually organizing information into a hierarchy to depict relationships among pieces of the whole. Mind mapping has a number of advantages. One, it facilitates the thinking process. Two, it helps you think better, solve problems creatively, and take action. Three, it triggers creativity and flexibility for problem solving. Four, it helps to avoid linear thinking by facilitating multi-directional thinking. Five, mind mapping 
allows you to get a full picture of the problem, you can apply mind mapping following these steps. One, first, begin by writing down the main concept to be mapped. Mapping can be done on paper, using a word processor, or using specialized software. Two, then add branches that start from the main concept. These are related subtopics. Three, for each subtopic that branches from the main concept, draw outer, thinner subbranches with more detailed concepts. Four, draw additional elements that represent narrower and narrower con subtopics. Five, organize the concepts from the mapping to make them meaningful. Six thinking hats is a method of parallel thinking that enables you to reflect on an idea in a detailed and cohesive way. You can divide the participants into six groups. Each group of participants chooses one of the six hat colors. If hats with the right colors are available, members can wear them literally. Each hat is a metaphor that represents a different kind of thinking. White hat. With this thinking hat, you focus on the available data for your idea. Look at the data objectively and analyze past trends. Look for gaps in your knowledge and try to fill them. Red Hat. Look at the idea using your intuition, gut reaction, and emotion. Think how often others could react emotionally especially people who do not fully know your reasoning. Black Hat, look at a decision's potentially negative outcomes. Look at it cautiously and defensively. Try to see why it might not work. This is important because it highlights the weak points in a plan. Black Hat thinking helps to make your plans more resilient. Yellow hat, look at the solution from a positive perspective. It is the optimistic viewpoint that helps you to see all the benefits of the idea. Green hat, this hat represents creativity. It is a freewheeling way of thinking in which there is little criticism of ideas. Blue hat. This hat represents process control. Think about the process needed to secure a smooth working of the idea. Those with a blue hat during this exercise can monitor the process by making sure that all other hats are being used correctly. Please use the QR code or website link at the bottom right of the screen to watch a short YouTube video that explains the method of six thinking hats. The goal of this stage is to visually present the prototype to the user and collect feedback. This is the intermediate stage between the idea and its final implementation. It is optimal to prototype two to three ideas. The prototype can be a physical, miniature, three-dimensional model. 
a digital computer model, a visual drawing, verbal story, or process scenario. The goal of prototyping is to seek feedback from the potential end user. Here are some important rules of prototyping. Think with your hands. Prototyping enables you to use your hands instead of your head for greater creativity. Bias towards action. Stop talking about it and do it. This enables you to discover your mistakes earlier. Celebrate failure. Failures are to be expected and even to be sought after. Quick and dirty. Rapid prototyping is about churning out one prototype after another. Iterations. The magic and power of prototyping comes out in iterations. Rough around the edges. A prototype is eternally a work in progress. Remember what you are testing for. All prototypes should have a central testing issue. Build with the user in mind. Test the prototype against the needs of your potential end user. Pitching is the process of presenting your idea to others with the goal of convincing them. The goal is to convey the value of your prototype solution in the easiest possible way. And ABC pitching is a method of highlighting four core elements of your prototype. Need. What is the exact nature of the need to be addressed? Approach. What is the approach or solution for that need? Benefit. How does this solution benefit the end user? Competition, what competing alternatives are available? The last step of design thinking is testing the product or the solution. The goal of this stage is to test the solutions developed in a real world environment. Subjects for testing, users, must be consciously chosen. Develop guidelines for testing. The ideal innovation should be desirable by customers, technically feasible, and commercially viable. After collecting the opinion, information is analyzed and possible changes introduced. After testing is effectively concluded, the new solution can then be implemented by the end user. Discussion question. Choose a specific social or environmental issue that your government or businesses are failing to solve in your community. It could be plastic waste, deforestation, traffic jams poverty, or joblessness? Answer one of the following two questions to analyze the problem. One, first use mind mapping to depict the core causes of the problem. Then use the five wise method to identify the root causes of the problem and depict it using a fishbone diagram. Two, next, propose one major solution to the problem you select. Use the six thinking hats method to reflect on the suitability of this solution. 
for each thinking hat provide at least one reason why the solution should be implemented and another reason why it should not be implemented. Thank you for your attention and for making time to watch this lecture. The next class will be live on Zoom. It will take place on Wednesday, November 16. You will receive an email notification with more details. Until the next lecture, goodbye.